My brothers and sisters, please be seated. Prior to the celebration of Holy Mass, I ask that you please take out your Mass booklets and turn to page 8. I don't know how many of you know, but this is an intention that is to be said before Holy Mass. And I'd like to share this intention and ask that you please pray along with me. <coughs> Father, we have come into your presence to share and offer you the great sacrifice of your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and to receive the sacrament of his most sacred body and blood. We do so in remembrance of his life, death, and passion, and in thanksgiving for all the blessings you have bestowed upon your holy church and upon us, your unworthy sinners. We wish to offer this Mass and to receive Holy Communion with all the love and contrition of which we are capable of, and in conformity with the sacred intentions of our Savior, who instituted it, as well as the Church who ever offers it. We desire, therefore, to offer this Mass and to receive Holy Communion for your greater glory, for the continual remembrance of the sacrifice of Christ, to thank you for all the blessings you have given us, to ask you for your help with problems we have, to ask you to bless all our relatives and friends, as well as all those who have died, and for our own special intentions this day. Lord, I ask that you would bless me through whom I will make this oblation. Bless all the people who are here to participate in this glorious action and all who would like to be here. Lord, convert all sinners, preserve peace and heal the anguish of the world, and have mercy on all the faithful departed. All these things we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God. examination of your conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord 
Grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, have pity on us, for we wait. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of trial. The Lord is exalted, enthroned on high. He fills Zion with right and justice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and the now, and the world, and the Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed each of us with the gift of family, that through our family life, we may learn to love and care for others. Open our eyes to recognize that in all people, the bonds of kinship. May our parish be blessed, the family of God, as we unselfishly serve you, who with us has been made co-heirs with Christ, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Creator and Redeemer of all faithful, grant unto the soul of your faithful departed handmaiden, our sister in blessed memory, Janet Whitman, forgiveness of her sins. May our devout prayers obtain for her the pardon promised by our Savior, we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife will be like a fruitful within your house. Your children will live like olive shoots around your table. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. 
Lo, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up with the training and instruction of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also, for, must also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Observe, my child, your father's bidding, and reject not your mother's teaching. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he, Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know of it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Yek bencha pafaloni Jesus Christus. And God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. These words are taken from the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, when we think of the Christian family, we think of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We recall on this solemnity of the Christian family, the Gospel of the story of Jesus at age 12, traveling up to Jerusalem, with Mary and Joseph to celebrate the Passover. We recall where Jesus stays behind in Jerusalem, and Mary and Joseph, realizing that he was not in their group, that evening turned back to search for him. I am sure that they were not happy with him, but they were relieved that they found him. We can equate the Holy Family to modern-day families and can build many sermons on the roles and responsibilities of the individual family, the father, the mother, and the child or children. We find many references in Holy Scripture that hold and teach the values of a family in their relationship with God. We read in Holy Scripture the importance and the obligations of parents raising their children in the ways of the Lord. We learn of the need for parents to pray for and pray with their children. We read of the responsibilities of parents to provide, educate, and discipline their children. As we recall in today's Gospel that after finding Jesus, he returns to Nazareth with them and became obedient unto them. We finally learn of the obligations that children have to their parents. In the case of Jesus to Mary and Joseph, that they should love and obey their parents as God commanded unto Moses in the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and mother. But today I would like to go beyond speaking of the indi individual family and concentrate on another family, the family of God, especially our family here at Holy Name of Jesus. Just as the, sanctify, the sanctity of a home is so important to a family, so too is the sanctity of the house of God. Each and every single one of us are godparents of this church, and we all have an obligation to strive to hold our family together in faith and righteousness unto the Lord, just as Mary and Joseph taught Jesus through their faith to be righteous unto the Lord. There are too many individual families who do not come up to the standards of the Holy Family. And just as individual families, there are not too many churches who can come up to the standards of living by the standards of the Holy Family. But unlike an individual family, a church family has additional difficulties for its members comprised of many families. Yesterday, while we were gathered at our church making pierogi for our fall bazaar, I shared with others conversations about our own individual families. What I found out was that many of us, including myself, came from ha families and homes that were not always perfect. We spoke of common factors, parents arguing and fighting in front of their children, making their homes not necessarily home, sweet home. We spoke of how that affected us as children 
and how many have resented the negative things that took place in our families. So similar, and yet much more to a parish family. We have all been entrusted with this church, a church dedicated to the values and teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is like our child, and we are called upon to nurture, pray to, pray with, and to protect this child as Christians baptized into the faith. As in individual families, where there are disagreements and fighting, a church family must be on guard to watch the infighting, the gossip, the hardness of hearts and grudges kept. We must ask ourselves today, are we providing a proper home for this child of ours? If our blessed Lord was to stand among us today in a physical way, what do you think he would say to us as godparents? What would he say to me? What would he say to you? What would he say to us? Would he remind each of us of how we need to work together and where we have not lived up to the standards by which we are called as his witnesses in our faith? My brothers and sisters, the Holy Scripture gives us standards to be the kind of family we should be and the kind of people we should be. I believe that these standards and values could be found in today's reading of St. Paul, the Colossians, in which he writes, take these words to heart. Put on them as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these things put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called into the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God bless all our families, and especially our church family, on this most special day. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grandchildren are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their parentage. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and of His holy church. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Bless all your children with an obedient spirit. May each home which nurtures them be an image of your kingdom and the care of their parents a likeness of your love. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord. Look with favor upon the gifts we offer you on behalf of the soul of your faithful departed handmaiden, Janet Whitman. Grant that her soul may be united with you in eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art of God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In your work of creation, you brought forth life and created human families. Your Son teaches us of the sanctity 
of human love and shows us the importance of family life. As your children, we desire to live in peace and love with one another and to be united with you as one Christian family. Therefore, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints in the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory this day, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, Father, God, Father and Light, heaven and earth of your glory, Hosanna in high Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in high Christ. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless and to accept and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again, he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which the high priest offered, Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your handmaiden, Janet Whitman, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. To her soul and all the souls who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after the divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weigh our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and, and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Let God be taken away from the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Now you should come into my heart, and only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I will say the word, and I shall be you.
and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them. Through our prayers, heaven sent this day to thy majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this sacred altar, the body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. My child, do not forget my teaching, but to let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as a family united in this Eucharist, we entrust to your loving care and correction the members of our families, both near and far. Supply their needs, guide their steps, keep them safe in body and soul, and may your peace rest upon us always through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, except all Holy Lord, our fervent prayers for the repose of the soul of your faithful handmaiden, Janet Whitman, and grant that through this holy sacrifice, her soul may be cleansed from all earthly transgressions and attain everlasting life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and our one God forever and ever. Sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of my worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, 
and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Besides that, I welcome you to church this day um, as we share in the solemnity of the Christian family. Um, a few of the announcements. First of all, please be aware that um, there will be no Mass on Monday through Thursday as I will be away from the parish attending the National Mission and Evangelism Commission of our church. With that in mind, following the Holy Mass, uh, during the fellowship hour, I will give a slight and a short presentation upon what is the work of the National Mission in Evangelism. Um, I ask that if you have a couple of moments, there are a few things that I'd like to share with you. Um, I will be returning um, late Thursday and I have placed uh, contact numbers for both Father Senior Soltisha and Father Adam Chaternetsky, uh, who have offered to answer any unforeseen emergencies. Um, I bring to mind, since we're talking of St. Valentine's, today at 12 o'clock they're going to have a harvest dinner, of which I will be uh, attending. Um, any of you who wish to, um, I invite. Uh, let's see, I placed in uh, upcoming choir rehearsals and I want to thank the members of our choir um, who we are going through a difficult time having lost our organist. Uh, we are looking at d our different options. Uh, I bring to mind next Sunday is Heritage Sunday. We talk of heritage, we talk of many different aspects of heritage. We talk about our Polish heritage. We talk about our Christian heritage. And so, with that in mind, uh, following Holy Mass, 
Uh, Dr. Shirley Medlitsky Floyd will be offering a talk on the work that is being done with the Strategic Planning Committee of the Eastern Diocese. There are actually very, three very important uh, commissions and committees in, in our church presently working and integrating. One is the National Mission in Evangelism, one is the Strategic Planning, and the other is the Future Direction of our church. Um, I also place that on October 21st, a week from tomorrow, 7 o'clock will be the monthly meeting of our parish committee. And I also put some information pertaining to the upcoming special synod of our church that will be held on October 25th in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I wish to thank all of the men and women who for the past three weeks gave of, your, gave of their time and their effort in making the pierogi for our fall bazaar. Um, I hope that I was able to capture everybody's name. Um, the next thing that's going to be coming up is going to be the making of Wonky. The schedule is there as well as the apple pies. I'm happy to announce that our stained glass window has finally been reinstalled. Um, I have taken some pictures from the inside. Now if you look from the outside, um, with the protective glass that's over it, you're probably not seeing it as clearly. And so one of the things that we've talked about is wanting to have backlighting for the window so that at nighttime that we can actually put it on the timer and actually have it for a couple of hours. I also bring to mind on Sunday, October 27th, and this is really, I, I, love, I love certain movies. And I remember years ago, there was a movie, uh, it was in 1972, that the fa famous filmmaker, Franco Zeffirelli, um, had a film entitled Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. It is a wonderful movie that's based on the life of St. Francis of Assisi. And so, following Mass and during the Holy, um, during our fellowship hour, I'd like to share the movie with you in the parish hall. That's when we do the raffle. Ah, okay. Well, thank you for letting me know. And uh, I, in turn, what I will do is that I will postpone it for another week. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? None being said? Yes, Marianne. Ah, you're busy today. I'm accepting raffle gifts for the um, raffle table for the fall bazaar. Yes. And I'm taking names. You don't have to, you know, bring it the next, but it has to be in my next week, um, because the week after is the fall bazaar. So, yes. you just tell me, I've got a pad downstairs, and I'll just write your name down, and I'll know what, what you're bringing. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me on that. Ah, I, I'm going to beat you to the punch. Okay. okay. Today, we have another birthday. Is that what you were going to? Yes, okay. Our dear brother, Eric, the Brinzi celebrated his 50th birthday. And so it's customary in our church to wish him a happy birthday by singing. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eric. Happy birthday to you. So this holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world of thy end. Amen. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister and blessed memory, Janet Whitman. Eternal rest grant unto her soul, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.